had more than 20 years experience in consulting. He's an extremely sharp expert in data-driven products, in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Maha Masabi is leading the data science uh, research and de development department in Bering Point for our demand sense products. And I am Jorko Benka in charge of managed services to grant best customer experience and bringing always forward our tool. And now I'll give the word to Mark. Yeah, thank you very much, Rogan. Hi, everyone. So, yes, my name is Mark, and I'm partner in charge of our data and AI driven product at Bering Point. And as an agenda, um, what we would like to propose you is today first have a quick introduction about about Bearing Point. I guess that most of you not necessarily know about us. Then we will share with you uh, what is demand sense and what it can do, what are the business benefits, etc. And of course, and I guess you would agree with that, to say that the demo is better than a long discourse. So I will uh, let Maha showcase the key features of demand sense via a demo. Naturally, you can ask any question at any time, and I hope you're going to have also some spare time at the end of the session for some Q&A. So who we are at Bearing Point? Basically, in a few words, uh, we're a management consulting firm with European roots and a global reach worldwide. In that perspective, we support our client in their digital transformation journey. And we enable our client, European clients, to become global leader. But we are more than this. We are also a software company embedded in a specific business unit, which is named product. We therefore develop innovative and competing IP-driven product, and we are really proud to be tech. In that perspective, we, we design, we develop, and we leverage the leading technology platform framework and component. But this is not only about delivering a piece of software. We also support and maintain them to let our clients be fully confident for the future. We've always up and running solutions and ambitious service level agreements. Last but not least, we are scaling. To let you have just an idea, before a recent spin-off at Bearing Point, the software business was tending for nearly 20% of our total revenue. Talking about numbers, maybe a few of them. Next slide, please, thanks. Um, in addition to this, in, two, in 2021, the milestone that we have achieved are an indicator of our capabilities, our innovations, and most of all, the ever-growing need for our products and services, and most importantly, the potential of our people. In 2021, we were something like 4,500 uh, 4, people meet this year and present in, uh, in 23 countries and a product portfolio which was about 20 assets, 20 softwares. Among the consulting practice, to let you also have an overview and before getting into details about demand sense, as part of our consulting practices, we have a team, dedicated experts in media and entertainment industry. We have an extensive and value-oriented portfolio of services, they work with the most emblematic media group and with a very strong footprint in book publishing. This is naturally together with our colleagues, consultants, that the idea is horizon and the, and the initiative has become a reality with Demand Sense. That would be, of course, a great pleasure to have a separated discussion on those topics if you're interested to know more about our book industry capabilities and experience. So let's talk now about demand sense. To make a long story short, we started before COVID with press publishers that were struggling in supply forecasting. The question at that time was really simple. How many copies should we print and then deliver in every single point of sales for the upcoming issue? Thanks to leading newspaper publishers, we invested first in algorithmic R&D, and, and once we got tangible results, we co-designed and developed the software, the user experience, the features, and so on. 
Jimensense was born. Jimensense.press is now used by leading publishers, including Le Figaro, Le Parisien, Les Echos, L'Equipe, etc. More recently, executives from book distributors shared with us their major concerns about sales and distribution digitization. This is how we co designed with Media Participation, who was the first to move on, a fully specific tool supporting sales forecasting and allocations, but also prospection tracking in order to impact positively productivity and the bottom line. Today, Dimensense is already at scale with a portfolio from more than 160 book publishers processed into it. To share a few numbers, that is standing for more than 10,000 new books per year that are delivered in more than 12,000 point of sales. And this is managed by, roughly speaking, something like 60 hand end users. The triggers for the current clients have been quite clear. They were searching for productivity due to workload issues. There was a kind of lack of trust in sales objectives from sales teams on the ground. And also the challenge to extend their business and typically onboard additional publishers. The outcome is that the process are now streamlined and forecast allocations accuracy are strengthened. As you can see today, our clients are pretty much Franco-French and we are naturally looking forward to cross the boundaries and see how we could support you wherever you are. So what about the challenge? I see that you already skipped this, the slide, but that's fine. So let's be more specific about DemandSense.book. The challenge at the core of the product is all about making sure that the right product, the right books will be available in the right quantity in the right place and also at the right time. Demand planning and sales forecasting or allocations are definitely challenging in book industry. We are talking about prototypic products distributed in complex and dense distribution network. In most of the situations that we have observed is that the operational process supporting this was really time consuming but also poorly equipped with a low level of support from sales representative, not trusting necessarily the number that are provided by central team. Considering the very limited, let's say non-existing options in terms of industry specific solution, this is exactly where demand sense comes into play. So what can demand sense do for you? First, of course, there is a question of forecast or of allocation. Here, the question is about defining the most relevant and accurate numbers that will fill the sales objectives per book, per point of sales for any given sales representatives. For that purpose, DemandSense is proposing an extensive set of methods or rules that you can easily configure and that will allow you to be very quickly processed to those computations. You can then, of course, check, adjust, simulate different options before sending objectives to sales reps desktop. Secondly, DemandSense will support you in monitoring closely how your prospection effort is progressing thanks to pre-orders constantly ingested into DemandSense. You have therefore a continuously and up-to-depth overview about overall progress, but also the ability to dig into details and investigate what's going on for, let's say, a specific book in a given distribution network. All of these allow you then to support decision-making process. Just one click, uh, your... When time has come, to decide your print runs. That will embed not only what quantity is needed at launch, but also the buffer to avoid any sold out situation in any part of your distribution network. 
Next, in addition to this, we are currently implementing a new module of Demand Sense dealing with the budget planning. We know it's a really tough work those days, and we are we have designed with the help of publishers a specific user experience that will really make it simpler and way more reliable. And that will be that will be released early 2023. Last but not least, you can easily configure and adjust your parameters in order to fit constantly the engine to your business requirements, thanks to these very specific uh, configuration modules. So what are the business benefits? I guess that um, the overall value proposition, as you may have already understood now, is to leverage data science in order to predict and track sales in the right places and print, therefore, the right volume of books. In terms of business benefit, it concretely means, first, that demand sense contributes to enhance the productivity. As notably, it's going to help to robotize and speed up the demand forecasting or location process. It will also build trust in forecasts from the sales team on the ground, and they won't, they won't continue to potentially reassess and redefine their own sales objectives bound on their own knowledge of the, of, of, the, of the network. Secondly, Demand Sense helps to increase the direct margin by lowering the quantities, distributed quantities, but also in the same time dealing with, this, with the trade-off of limited the sold out situations. It also reduced the cost to operate and the raw material acquisition by lowering the quantities. You also reduce the paper required to print the different books. Last but not least, Demand Sense is contributing to the corporate social responsibility policy by, redu by reducing naturally the impact on the natural resources. That can be printing and paper, but also distribution effort. Well, <clears throat> beyond this introduction about uh, Demand Sense, and I hope that you have now um, a better understanding about what is Demand Sense, I will let the floor to Maha, who's gonna, who's gonna share with us and showcase the uh, key features and key module of Demand Sense. So Maha, the floor is yours. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I'll be sharing my screen. So as Mark said, uh, Demand Sense Books is, um, is a solution AI-driven SaaS solution that simplifies, uh, makes reliable and accelerates the novelty distribution processes. So three values and complete modules. Uh, here we can see the different modules proposed by uh, Demand Sense. The application supports the publishers uh, from the target launch definition. It's allocation for every uh, point of sales, mainly through this module, to the prospecting uh, follow up uh, and more. So let's start with the sales forecasting one and its sub modules pre allocation and point of sales allocation. Um, Demand Sense displays the complete program of novelties. Uh, to soon to be soon to be released. Um, here, an, as an example, we are displaying uh, the uh, for the year split into five cycles. Uh, each cycle is spread over two or three months. Uh, let's view, for instance, in detail the first cycle of 2023. This one, uh, meaning the novelties uh, of uh, uh, January and February next week. So I'll be clicking on the card. And here displayed uh, the whole program of the first cycle of 2023. Uh, here I can see all the books that will be re released. I can uh, go through page per page to view all the novelties. Um, in total here, I have uh, 1,142 novelties and uh, obviously uh, Demand Sense is scaled to support more. So all the data, let me mention that all the data that you are seeing uh, is a testing data. Uh, so for each book, for each book, uh, we are seeing um, several information like uh, the, the book codes, 
um, its collection publisher series, uh, its price, uh, the one or many authors, some relevant dates here, uh, a comment zone to enable users to uh, freely uh, set some comments uh, during, um, during uh, meetings with publisher, for instance, uh, and many, many other information. Um, the, the page of the grid has also several filters. Uh, here in, I can select, uh, for instance, a specific, um, a specific uh, editor, a specific brand. Uh, the number of books have changed here. I have only 21 for the, the editor that I have selected. Um, I can also filter on a specific author if needed. And it is also possible to combine several filters. So I'll be working, for instance, on uh, a novelty called The Others. So here in the titles case, I have filtered uh, the novelties starting with B. So I'll be working on the first one, The Others. Um, the instance simplifies lookalike research, potential use for allocation among a tremendous choice. So here in the lookalike number one, I will be clicking here, and this will um, let me accede to uh, the list of all the reference um, products already released. In our testing database, we have uh, approximately uh, 80,000 one. I'll be selecting, for instance, uh, a lookalike article that belongs to the same collection of my novelty, the others. Um, I'll be selecting, for instance, this one released on 2019, the Society of Involuntary Dreamers. So when I, once I have selected my lookalike uh, product, I have access to its historical sheet containing the distributed copies, the returned ones, and the net aggregated in different uh, periods starting from its release date. So here I have the quantities of the first, first three months, the first six months, the 12 months, and the up-to-date quantities um, as a total on the first line. And then uh, for each market, for instance, here we are dealing with four, four markets, France, Belgium, Swiss, and Quebec. And uh, under the markets, you will have uh, the uh, networks. Um, please note that the networks are groupings of clients having, uh, having the, some similarities. Um, it could be, uh, for instance, the uh, generalistic library, the specific ones. Uh, it could be some brands like uh, Amazon, uh, it could be also the large uh, hypermarkets, uh, the medium ones. So all of these um, statistics are displayed at a network mark, uh, at a network level, sorry. Knowing that we have two uh, levels. So uh, if I'm okay with this lookalike uh, selected, I can uh, save it, otherwise I can change it. So I'll be saving mine, and as you can see, that the information have already uh, is already updated for my uh, novelty, the others. Um, so uh, now, all of these contextualized information uh, help me uh, to help the users to define uh, the number of copies to be supplied. So I maybe I have done several meetings with the uh, publishers to uh, uh, to know more about my uh, novelty. I have set one look like uh, for the others, uh, knowing that I can select up to four lookalikes in the product. I can set a target quantity, um, a total tar target quantity. For instance, I'll be typing three thousand copies. So oh, it is red because I haven't uh, allocated the uh, launch to the allocation process yet. Um, I will select my product and then launch the first uh, allocation. So um, 
DimenSense offers multiple uh, allocation methods, first among the markets. Uh, here an example, we are dealing with the same four markets, France, Belgium, Quebec, and Swiss. Uh, then among the clients networks, the one that we have seen, uh, libraries, hypermarkets, and finally to the point of sales uh, level. So I, have, I, I select my product, I can select more, launch the market allocation, confirm, and instantly uh, the quantities are distributed among the uh, four markets with uh, the um, rule that I have set, which is the division. I can change it easily to select uh, one of the rules that we propose in the product, the publisher, the series, um, the reference, meaning the lookalike um, product that I, have, that I have selected. So if I'm selecting division, meaning that we are considering all the historical data, um, the lookalikes belonging to the same division as the novelty that we are dealing with. So then I'll be launching the level two allocation, meaning distributing the quantities at the network level. I will click into the uh, product to see the details. The computation is ongoing. Um, it is already done. The, the computation is really quick. So please note that um, the algorithm of allocation uh, take into account the distribution network structure and the specificities of some new brands. Uh, the, if the allocation is not satisfying, no problem. You can easily here change the parameters. So I will uh, relaunch it with the publisher. Um, DemandSense also allows simulation and manual inputs. So it is already done. Uh, I have the uh, result of the level two allocation uh, according to the rule I have set here and a comparison with the same allocation, but according to the lookalike, the Society of Involuntary Dreamers that we have set together. Um, in the results, we will have the distribution of the, the 3000 copies among the uh, different markets. And then for each market, I will have also the distribution on the uh, networks. So for the quantity for Amazon, I can easily put some manual inputs. So change the preposition by another one. The total will be updated accordingly. Um, and here on the, on the right part, we will have the information of the lookalike on the same level. So the market and the networks. Uh, which is a pertinent information to rely on to do the uh, to uh, to validate the allocation. Uh, I'll be back to the uh, whole program page of the cycle one. Um, please um, several uh, please note that several manipulations could be done to selection of products. So I can select a whole page or many pages or all the program and apply several. Uh, manipulations like um, identifying the uh, products as non-programmed, uh, launching also the other market or the level two allocation. So it could be done uh, on a group of products to easier the process for the users. Uh, please also note that this page is configurable. So each user can choose uh, its view, the columns to display and their order through this small module configuration. So here you have the, all the columns displayed and uh, we can uh, add uh, easily uh, many other columns, um, either an information for the, uh, for the product, for the novelty or some columns used to easier the process and change their order and save the configuration for future use. Um, DimenSense also have several user profiles. Some are all with a um, read-only mode and others uh, are granted with several editing rights. So um, once I have worked, I have launched the allocation on the all of the products, I can, um, I can download 
all of these information, the information of the products and the result of, of the level two allocation to uh, an Excel file. It is an appropriate and complete uh, format, allowing uh, the users to easily um, share it either internally or maybe to publishers. And here is the file, it is complete. It contains all the uh, allocation uh, results of the whole program. So um, in this pre-allocation step, as I said, the quantities are allocated uh, to the client's networks. So to go to a further level, to go further and distribute the quantities to a point of sales level, um, it is done here in the allocation page. I'll be selecting the same cycle to work on, the first one of 2023, and also I'll be selecting the same product, the others. I have already launched the computation on the point of sales level. Uh, we will have approximately the, the, the same view with the uh, product uh, information and um, the distribution, not only on the market level and not only on the networks level, but this time on the clients level. So we have seen, uh, I think Amazon, yeah. So in, Ama in Amazon, I have nine clients. So here I have the distribution of uh, the total quantity of 98 uh, copies over the different uh, point of sales related to Amazon and their information here. And again, um, if I'm not satisfied with these allocation, I can easily change the rule uh, to collection or to a publisher uh, one, and then or, or also change the lookalike um, product because I can have a lookalike for the pre-allocation and a different one for the point of sales allocation and relaunch re the calculation. So uh, this is done for each novelty until um, the whole program is ready. Um, an important point is that we have several administration pages uh, to enable users to manage the client's uh, network and configure some default rules per publisher. Uh, the first page, for instance, network rules is the page where we list all the networks like Amazon, like specific libraries, non-visited libraries uh, for the several markets that we are dealing with. Uh, the second one is for customers rules. So here we display, display some information about the point of sales. Here we have uh, in the test data set 13,000. So their city, their zip code, the country, their active or inactive status, their creation date. And uh, here we can assign uh, the, uh, the network, which belongs to. Uh, then we have um, the page to set some default allocation rules per publisher. Uh, the rents management page is uh, to handle release dates for the logistic issues. And finally, the Salesforce mapping to, to visualize the agent's team during the visit to, to the libraries. Uh, so these modules uh, help to manage uh, the thousands of novelties that we have seen in the different cycles in the pre-allocation and point of sales allocation submodules. So uh, once the quantity is set for each uh, product and each client, it is sent uh, to other systems uh, to enable the agents start their visits and collect uh, pre-orders. Uh, so DemandSense allows also to manage the sales prospecting page, supervising the activity of key accounts, but also the daily pre-orders. Uh, taken by the sales delegates to continuously refine sales trend estimates. So orders of some brands uh, in the prospection module can be imported directly through this page. So here I can select the cycle, uh, select the brand, which is Amazon, and I'll be loading, uh, I am a key account, and I'm, I'll be loading uh, uh, the pre-orders for Amazon, for the novelties of the, the February and January of 2023, 
I'll be selecting the both months. And here it is a, a small parameter to force zeros on unset quantities. I will import file. Um, and a small report will be displayed uh, having some uh, errors. So uh, some unrecognized articles, uh, some uh, aberrant quantities, and some alerts also saying that uh, uh, be aware that uh, those three products have a high final target quantity launched, but yet not a pre-order is uh, saved on these on these uh, products. Um, orders, so um, orders of some brands can be loaded here, and uh, pre-orders of delegates um, visiting the point of sales are gathered also in these two pages with a summarized view and the detailed view. I'll be selecting a different cycle here. So uh, in this view, we'll have some indicators um, like the uh, to, um, to monitor closely the prospection progress. So here we have, for instance, the percentage of visited clients and here um, the percentage of realized uh, target quantity and the loaded orders uh, loaded through this page. For instance, here that uh, number saying that 74% uh, of orders on the French market were taken uh, for January, the, the first month for January novelties. Uh, in the detailed view, uh, we'll have approximately this, the same information, but detailed on the product level and also on the market and networks level. Uh, the first columns uh, will have a summary uh, of the book's information. Um, then on the right part uh, of for this screen, uh, we'll have uh, the uh, a sum up of the orders loaded through this page, the uh, orders of the brands, the CAM orders. Then uh, the orders of the agents visiting the libraries, um, the uh, percentage of visited clients, the target quantity of uh, the visited clients, and uh, the resulting trend. Again, uh, demand sense to compute this trend takes into account the specificities of each network. In that way, demand sense supports sprint decisions with reliable indicators limiting unnecessary copies in the first print. Again, um, approximately for each page of the product, uh, product we have uh, several filters to, um, uh, to refine the scope of the analysis. Uh, we have also an export to have a different view uh, through Excel. And we can also do many, um, many manual inputs which, for instance, the trend here is for, um, I can change it to 10, and all the superior level are updated, noticing that uh, these uh, quantity was changed manually, and it's not a result of um, uh, an automatic computation for the trend. Uh, that was a quick tour on the product. Um, please do not hesitate to ask questions in the Q and A in the Q and A uh, box. Yes, it was quite. Thank you very much, Maha. Thank uh, for this uh, insight on the tool. Um, I hope you are not. Uh, there was very many many screens, many many figures, yeah. and uh, the yes. But you can trust the the, the tool is quite uh, quite. Efficient and as you seen, as, as you have seen, it's also very quick from one screen to the other. The computing is quite in stunning times, and uh, and this is quite uh, yes stunning for these uh, masses of data we have put inside. I think we have a discussion. Let's have a look. Uh, there is a question. There's no question. Perhaps you. In this stage, it's perhaps too early for you to have a, a quite technical question. 
don't hesitate to ask us uh, some more about the the environment of the tool, how to use it, how to can how to embed it in your uh, IT uh, system, uh, because uh, we can adapt it in many many ways. And there is not only one demand sense books; it uh, we can adapt it in 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 several in several different systems. And uh, but these are technical questions we can we can clear further on. Perhaps we can share another slide. Uh, yeah. with Mark and perhaps uh, comment a little. <clears throat> my screen once more yeah that's a good idea Jorge. maybe we can unless any question uh, uh, rise now and again feel free to do so but um as far as we understand usually there are lots of questions about how a product such as demand sense can quite easily fit into uh, let's say a legacy information system and um, the bottom line is that as you mentioned, Jorge, it's um, in some way quite easy, but it also requires some some kind of some kind of, of effort. I would say, uh, demand sense is basically here. You have a, a, a very clear and, and, and schematic uh, approach with the different data sources that uh, that uh, demand sense gonna need to work properly. On the left hand side you have what we used to call the product information management. Basically, all the master data related to the product, to the book itself. So within information describing what type of books, of collection, of publishers, etc. We also need in some way to get access to um, both customer master data and also historical sales data, let's say. That is expected to be at, at the most granular level, meaning that we need to know in some way uh, all the different flows of volume, in, I mean, in and out for, for every single book and every single um, point of sales, I would say. Regarding the customer master data, depending on the on your scenario that can be a dedicated crm and in some situation we have also observed that that can be in some way in a single european aggregating customer data but also transactional data and there is also a third um a third let's say tool that is interconnected with dimensions which is more downstream, but once you have, as uh, Mahe uh, explained, once you have defined, allocate all the volume for all the upcoming portfolio to be issued, then you need to be sure that all those quantities are properly handed over by the sales representative teams so that there is a connection downstream in order to let them play with and get access to those sales objectives. And in the other way around, demand sense is definitely needing to, 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 to be aware about, uh, in terms of pre-orders, how it's going on in order to let the central team having a clear understanding about the current trends and reassess constantly what would be the most relevant target quantities to be distributed at the very granular level. So what you see here is that are the different streams in and out. And we have, a, let's say, a, a strong experience uh, with the help of our, what we used to call the ETL, which is basically a technical component that is allowing us to make the connection with the different information system as efficient and as simple as possible. So this is part of our job to, to make the integration process, uh, let's say something which is not painful, even if it needs some attention and we're gonna pay, we're gonna be very careful about securing the fact that the right information into the system is, is the one that you wanna play with and the one which is the most relevant to your business. 
maybe also um how oh, i can see uh, i don't know if there is this is a question very interesting in the data scoping and actually showing the slide here yes thank you uh ruben um maybe another slide also uh that we thought it's it's more like a wrap-up slide you know but uh, and it's based on our naturally on our from our perspective but um you could you could you could ask for typically what makes all of what you were saying today what what did, what does it make it so unique or in which way you would consider it differentiates from let's say other technologies available on the markets and um, what we would like to say is on the on the, on the let's say left hand side is that um, first there is a question of providing relevant reliable and very quickly the right information that you will feel confident to play with both centrally and also locally when you have sales teams that are meeting bookshops and clients that they don't want to have objectives which has nothing to do with the reality and to to let to to secure that that part of the promise we have invested a lot in terms of you know processing transforming enriching and computing the data secondly this yeah. is also something which is yeah Just, sorry for interrupting because there was a question upcoming from the floor by uh, yes i will repeat it is there any automated way to input the metadata to the system perhaps it connects to other software for this as well what can you say about this mark yeah, in terms of in, term, in terms of master data is um, you know mostly we are uh, we are needing information coming from the product information system on one sense on on one side which is describing as precisely as possible the product itself and also in terms of master data there is all the question which is which is also quite critical about the descriptions of where those products are expected to be to be delivered and distributed and legacy information system are nurturing dimensions we are also connection with uh, gfk as long as you're looking for typically a lookalike product which has never been you know distributed by your own company but you are looking for numbers and allocation of a specific reference that is not uh, that has never been managed by your team. So there is also such source of information that can feed um, that can feed the demand sense. In terms of so, let's say unique selling point. I mean, what makes us different is <clears throat> all of what we have discussed now has been completely design and with and for book industry um, even if we have leveraged our experience uh, in uh, that uh, what we have done in the press industry what we have designed in terms of user experience workflow features allocation engine etc is completely fitting with our understanding of what the what the book distributors and book publishers would look for and we have designed this with several teams coming from book distributors that that had an interest in designing with us this this new solution also uh, i would like to emphasize the something that is really critical for us about making Anytime you, you launch a new tool and you give access to your teams to a new product, a new solutions, then there is a huge question in terms of change management. Adding something new is always a question of adding a layer of complexity. And we are paying great attention to minimize these you know, entry costs in terms of change management. We want something that is that should be really intuitive, easy to you know to play with i hope that this short demo that may has, has shared with you is letting you feeling 
that in, in very you know few sessions you can you can become a kind of expert of of, of demand sense and directly get access to the outcome and to value that is expected from it and last but not least even if this is a little bit techy but uh, this is also part of our dna i mean we are both come really focused on the value delivered by the technology really but also on making sure that all the and let's say the building block from an IT perspective are robust enough and that something which is critical is that you are not only buying some things to play with uh, for the next six months we want something that is robust reliable and that you can trust in for the upcoming period so we want something that can easily be you know maintained and and supervised by our team Yes, one question. Uh, yes, um, uh, by uh, Nathaniel, uh, who want to go further on the the architecture and the, um, let's say the scoping and architecture. And uh, the question was also to get the slide. Yes, we will distribute uh, the main slides of this presentation after the after the webinar. Yeah, of course. Um, not sure that we have that many. We have that, that many reaction to this. No, maybe you can so just questions. maybe you can just keep to the next to the last slide just to let you uh, let you know that of course we're gonna be we're gonna be present during the upcoming uh, FBM of course. Um, you can you can imagine that we would be delighted to have further discussion, very open discussion uh, about what we have just uh, discussed. So feel free to just to uh, to give a heads up in uh, during the FBM. We're gonna we're gonna be located in the whole free ground zero. level ground zero, right? Okay, and. Uh, the reference of the stand is the age 22 and be, beyond this yeah of course you can you can just drop an email very easily you have here my my email uh, my professional email so feel free to at any time just drop a mail uh, of course and you can also have a, have a look on the website uh, if you just look for in the Google Google bar and you're looking for demand sense, uh, you should quite easily find out um, find out the uh, the website for demand sense, which is gonna uh, come back on the let's say uh, key messages that we have shared. We will focus on one hand on demand sense specific for press and also the dimension that has been specifically designed for the book industry. Great, thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for, uh, for participant, to be participant of this uh, webinar. Uh, you can contact us, as Mark says, uh, by email, by our website, and best will be to come to the book fair to our stand. And we can we can answer all your questions, uh, evaluate your need, and uh, go further on with your need and your uh, your belonging. What what you want to do? What you want to uh, for your forecast and what and to analyze your problem to give a right answer uh, based on our consultancy experience, on our media and marketing experience, and also of our data science and machine learning. Uh, knowledges. Thank you very much all and um, yes, hope to see you soon and come back to us to, to give to have any more information. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye. Thank bye you. Bye bye, bye, -bye, bye. everyone.